Join myself and King as Ramadi. Together we will devour the very God. Hello everybody, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, I have been sick for a bit, and I couldn't really use my controller for the meantime because it was busted. I kind of fixed it, but I'm not too sure for how long it will stay that way. So, again, I apologize, but I'm here. For this video, I just wanted to show you a small little uh, tip and guide, if that makes sense, on what I have learned about Yoshimitsu. I don't think I've seen this with anybody else, um, but I just wanted to showcase it on my channel, so that way, if you're somebody who is also a Yoshi main, or a Yoshi uh, player that picked up Yoshi, then you will at least learn how to utilize these moves uh, to your best of your ability, okay? So let's get to it. Now, there's one thing that we already know about Yoshimitsu is that the way that Bandai Namco has uh, changed him in this game is that they definitely emphasize the no sword stance a lot in his kit. You can essentially do no sword stance simply by pressing back 1 plus 2. It used to be simply just pressing uh, 2 plus 3 and second 7 to go into no sword stance. You can also go into no sword stance from doing down 2, 2 into 2 plus 3 in second 7. But now instead, you can just do down 2, 2 and then press back. And there you go. You're in no sword stance. Another neat trick and that allows you to go into no sword stance is essentially going from a wall rising four and pressing back it goes into no sword stance so what this emphasizes is that yoshimitsu while in no sword stance a lot of his moves get enhanced with the cursed blade of yoshimitsu essentially it allows you access to uh more damage healing properties and even some different interactions on counter hit. So let's just go through the list that I have here to particularly showcase what are the differences between using these skills in no sword stance and then utilizing them in just your default stance. Okay, so starting out with 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one in your default stance is just a regular 1-1 one, one hit. It's uh, your one and only 10 frame jab that you can use to punish people with. Uh, of course, you also have your 2-2 two, two to punish with, but we're not talking about that in this particular video. While utilizing 1-1, one, one, hitting the target, it puts him in a full crouch state. But in no sword stance, it knocks them down. Now, as I've already showcased, is that this move by itself, while in your default stance, only does 26 damage. But if you were to be in no sword stance, you're doing 29. While also gaining back health in the time that you're using this skill while you're in no sword stance. Now the needle trick about doing this move is that if you were to get a counter hit on the last hit, it gives you a float, meaning you have ample time to go for a combo with Yoshimitsu. The next move, down forward 3-1, might not seem all that crazy, it's just a mid move that can easily be sidestepped. But, similarly to how 1-1 one -one does, it places the, uh, the target into a full crouch state. If you use this move while you're in no sword stance, Similarly to your 1-1, one, one, while in no sword stance, it gives you a full knockdown. And similarly to 1-1 one, one in no sword stance on counter hit, it also gives you a float. Your next move is down 1. If you already know what down forward 3-1 does, then I would assume you already know what it will do in no sword stance. Unlike in the previous games, Yoshimitsu didn't really have the ability to use his sword in no sword, in no sword stance by doing down one. It would only unleash like his like a karate chop. But in this version, he is able to use his sword still. 
And again, on counter hit, it gives you a float. Now, mind you, if you're using down 1 or down forward 3 1 and you're charging it, it does not give you the properties that No Sword Stance does with the enhanced version of the Yoshimitsu Sword. It only gives you a full knockdown. It doesn't give you the properties that would float them. Next move, and this is his best move that I recommend you utilizing as much as possible in your fights. At least not to the point that they can essentially duck it, because this is duckable. Is his 3-1. Now, 3-1 doesn't really have any special properties if you were to use it in a counter hit state. But you do get more damage while in no sword stance. And you get health back. But the reason why this move is highly recommended in my opinion, and even the developers themselves would probably state it too in the game, is that this move on block is plus 7. So this means that if you were to try to retaliate with any other move in your Dragonfly Stance, usually I would re recommend to use Dragonfly Stance 2 and Dragonfly Stance forward 1 plus 2. Any other move, they can probably jab you out in the meantime. So while you're using 3-1, check them with Dragonfly Stance 2 or 4 1 plus 2. So anytime they try to go and retaliate against you, just use those two moves. Now, of course, these two moves can be ducked. So being mindful, if you're trying to like knowledge check them, that they can't still retaliate. So if they do try to knowledge check you by simply crouching, I would advise to use your other moves. For example, using your 4, that has a heat engager, or using your Dragonfly Sensor to 1 in the game. Now, this no longer is an unblockable, unlike in Tekken 7, but it still has a unique property that while you are able to counter hit them, it floats. In Heat State, on the other hand, it allows you to actually do the move and still get the float, regardless if it's a counter hit or not, while also gaining health back. Then your next move will be forward one in Kencho Stance. Same thing. Gives you a little bit more damage and it gives you health in return. No other special properties with this move besides just that. Of course, if you already know, when you're utilizing Kenshon to forward 1, if you want to get more damage across from this one move, hold the move. But if you were to do that against an opponent that is blocking, you're minus 12. So this means that you can get hit by a 10 frame move or a 12 frame move. So I'd advise you instead to just use the non-hold version. It becomes minus 5. The next enhanced move that you can use in this kit is Ken into 2, 1 plus 2. You can also hold the move as well to get yourself even more damage. And if you have a floor breakable stage, then you can also break the floor. In no sword stance, more damage and health back while also if you were to use the move and hit on the last hit let's say they block the first hit but they don't retaliate and you use the one plus two right after on a fully charged or even even regardless if it's not fully charged it'll give you a knockdown state but on a fully charged version, it gives you a massive float. Now, you already know about up, back, 1 plus 2. It's one of the core moves in his kit that you already seen either in his trailers or through other players' uh, own content. The biggest reason why you would want to use this move, even on neutral, is that the move has good range. If you're further back, though, you would miss... Though, in that case, I did miss. You had a miss. But in no sword stance, 
Now, you're able to hit him. It actually increases your range, your distance. So you're able to hit a target from much further in, or out, I should say. Your next move after that one will be your 3, 2, 1, plus 2. Same thing. And it enhances your last hit. And, of course, uh, it gives you health. So, really good move, though I would recommend only using this if in a combo or uh, in a wolf splat combo. Not really getting this in neutral won't really get you much, and they're more likely to just sidestep you. Then his infamous move, Flash. Now, Flash has been nerfed in this game for good reason, I would believe. Uh, that it no longer gives you the crumple state so that you'll be able to then get a full-on combo. But this is only if you're using it in your default state. So if you're using it in your no sword stance, you can still get a combo and you get health back. Not to mention there's a bigger hitbox on this move, so you're more likely to hit your target with the no sword stance flash. But this doesn't mean that the regular flash has not been improved, even though it no longer gives you a combo from the regular flash. From what I can see, you can still get a flash up close. In Tekken 7, you couldn't really get the flash from the regular flash in your default stance, even if you were close enough to them. You have to be in an angle. You have to perform the regular flash and hit them with this. But now in this game, you can just be right in front of them and you can still land the flash. So this is a big, big buff, in my opinion, to Flash. People might say that it's a nerf. Some of the Yoshimitsu mains will also say the same, that it might be a nerf. But I say that this is more of a, a nerf and a buff at the same time. That increase the hit range, and you won't get the combo anymore. You'll get a mini combo, or you get the heat engager if you want that, which is still pretty strong on its own. But if you go into no sword stance, which will probably be in most of your time, you can still get a big combo and you get health back so if you want to be utilizing yoshimitsu the best you can do with yoshimitsu is try to go into your no sword stance as much as possible trying to use your other moves in his kit is definitely a necessary means to try to get more damage across like for example if you want to go into dragonfly stance and try to use your command grab or trying to use your Dragonfly Sans into 4, that's a Heat Engager. And of course, your Dragonfly Sans into 1, on counter hit, giving you a float. And in Heat State, it gives you the float anyways, regardless if it's not a counter hit or not. You also have your 3, but you would only use this uh, to try to check them if they're going to block low. And on counter hit, it does still give you something. Which is a launcher. And now to the negatives that I can find with Yoshimitsu. Uh, I will go with a bit more of the positives later on, on the video. It's going to be quite long. Uh, and those negatives that I can say about Yoshimitsu is a few of the things having to do with his core moves that he used to have in Tekken 7, but they kind of either removed their interactions in Tekken 8, or they removed some of the influence that they used to have in Tekken 8. So, big thing, CD2. CD2 no longer bounds if you go for a combo. That's a big nerf. Big nerf. But you can still have the properties where if you get a counter hit from this, you still get a bound. And good thing about this too also, that it doesn't immediately screw attack, but you can still go for your tornado. One thing I also really hate, about Yoshimitsu. Boomsaw Slayer is no longer an unblockable. It just gives you a full knockdown. So in situations where you want to use this move to try to beat them, let's say if they have very little health left and you want to take the round, you can try using that to your advantage. Same thing with Dragonfly Sense 1. It used to be an unblockable. Now it's just a regular move. But it has now the properties that if you get the counter hit, it floats them. And if you're in heat state, it still floats them even though you're not getting the counter hit. Which means also that since you wanted to go for one of his B&B combos in Tekken 7, for example, let's say you were to launch them and decide to go for CD2, which bound, 
you can actually guarantee yourself the Moonsault Slayer. But you can't do that anymore in Tekken 8. But there is a positive to one of the unblockables that he has now that they changed. His up forward 1 plus 2 in Tekken 7 now changed into up forward 1 plus 3. And now combo. So if you were to get this complete unblockable hit, mind you, it has a special property where if you try to use it a little earlier, it becomes a regular hit. So it is not an unblockable. But if you fully charge it or fully let it go, it becomes a combo. Dealing a lot of damage. So again, back to the negatives. Uh, his usual, how should I say, Oki setups, where he can go for his up back one plus two windmill spin, it, they have slowed it down. So you have more of a more time as the opponent to get away from this. You may not see the difference, but there is a small tinge of slowness. As you can see, it is slower, but weirdly enough, in your no sword stance, it's faster. It is much faster, much faster. So I will see a lot of Yushimitsu using that more often, the finger windmill instead of the sword windmill. Now, funny enough, the only thing that I can find that can have some use for Moonsault Slayer is that if you go for Kangaroo Kick, and quickly enough, this is hard to pull off actually, quickly enough, do Moonsaw Slayer after, you can actually get yourself a full no uh, full knockdown, dealing three hits. And if you're on a floor break stage, I didn't put it off right there. You can do that. But it's not really a big deal, and it's actually quite hard to pull off. If you do get all three hits, it's actually three hits, not two. The second hit actually becomes a full knockdown and will splat them onto the ground. So if there's a floor break, it will break the floor immediately. But there's actually three hits, giving you a about 61 damage, which is quite high, but why would you want to go for that when you can go for Kangaroo Kick into any other combo that will deal probably more, especially if you have the wall. Now, a neat move that I didn't really see uh, it being used in the trailer, I don't think I've seen it uh, happen in the trailer, is that he has his flea stance into forward two that puts him into dragonfly stance. Now he has this in Soul Calibur 6, but they brought it into Tekken 8. Now why do I find this move useful is that on block, it's plus seven. So similar to 3-1, that is also plus seven, that move also is plus seven on block. So if you use this move, you're plus seven, and depending on the range that you're in, you might even retaliate with a four, or your usual two, or your four, one plus two. But what I also found neat is that, unlike with three, one, I'm not sure how different the frames are comparatively. I see, this is 20 frames. And this is 22 frames on startup. So if you were to use this move in flea stance, and mind you, this is also a homing move. So this means that unlike with 3-1, that you can only really get is either 2 or 4 or 1 plus 2. You can actually get something else. And what I checked is that if the opponent is using highs, you can go into Indian stance. It's not super safe, if depending if you're using a high move that goes into a mid move. But if there's a chance that you're fighting against somebody that throws mostly high moves, like let's say Victor or a Mishima like Kazuya or even Devil Jin, with their flash punch, you can actually duck it with Indian stance while you're in your Dragonfly stance and do moves like that. So that's really all about it, about Yoshimitsu. I don't think there's anything else that's crazy with him. That I have figured out, of course, if you use his Heat Smash. You 
can go into your Dragonfly stance if they block all the moves. And you're plus 10, unlike with the other moves, that's only plus 7 if you're using 3-1, and Flea Stance into 4-2. So this gives you opportunities to then go for either your Command Grab, or Dragonfly Stance into 4. Now, one other thing that I'll mention, and I'll end the video right there, is that in no Sword Stance... To get the uh, big spinneroony uh, tornado move, not the actual bound spin, but the big tornado ones that you can see in some combo videos, uh, use this move while you get yourself either a bound. So let's say that if you're trying to go for a down forward two into down two two two, right? Go for flash, and it gives you that. One particular combo that I found that was really cool to pull off is that if you're in no sword stance and you go for your samurai cutter in no sword stance, immediately go for flash and you get that. You don't have to move forward, just press flash immediately so you'll get the hit in. So it's a pretty cool combo you can go for. Uh, you don't have to go and use Flash if you don't want to. You can just go for a different combo. But if you want a bit more damage and go back into your Dragonfly stance, then you can, of course, do that and get more damage from there. So, yeah, that's about it. I don't have anything else to say. I will continue on showing more videos uh, like I used to. So, stay tuned for more Yoshimitsu videos. See ya.